You know, it's increasingly apparent that mathematics do not apply to the literary world. Example, mathematics tell us a negative and a negative equal a positive. Literary world, if you have a shitty author take inspiration from another shitty author, it doesn't make a positive movie, it doesn't make a good movie, it just makes shit. It's shit inspired by shit, which creates more shit. It's all negative. No math, no logic. Why are we here? Fifty shades of socially acceptable porn that your girlfriend's gonna insist she's allowed to watch even after she made you delete your entire digital stash. I know, it's completely unfair, the hypocrisy. So Fifty Shades of Grey is the movie adaptation based on the book, which is based off a of Twilight fan fiction. Seriously, look it up, that's how that shit started. And it's completely apparent this was inspired by Twilight. Everyone in this movie is an exaggeration or cartoon version of a Twilight character. You have Save Me From My Boring Ass Life, Bella. In Twilight, Edward was this really controlling, shitty boyfriend. This grey guy is, of course, I mean, he's a dominatrix, so he's more controlling. I mean, this guy is a complete freak. Not only, I mean, the, the S&M stuff, I mean, people have their bedroom kinks. It's, I get it. That's not bad. It's not necessarily freaky, it's not scary, but it's when he's like bumped into her a couple times at this point she just gets his phone number and she drunk dials him and she's like, hey, and I'm drunk, and he's like, what? Are you drinking? Stop drinking right now. You put down that devil water. You don't know this girl that well. Why are you ordering her to do stuff? Just to be a dick? Right there, there should have been a red flag. She should have been like, yeah, mm -mm, no, not that guy. Odds are that went through her mind. She was like, oh wait, but he's a billionaire. All right, yeah, I guess I'll put up with it. You have Team Jacob friend zone. It's really pathetic too. He's like, hey friend, what do you want to do today? Yeah, I, I totally want to fuck your tits, but I'm not going to be able to because I'm not a billionaire. But this movie, is the gimmick is the S&M shit. That's what sells this movie. It's ultimately, it is porn. The bummer for the movie is that it's theatrically released porn. So hey, it wants to play with the big boys. It wants to be judged as a movie. We're gonna judge this shit as a movie. I mean, if Jenna Hayes Dark Side was released as a movie, it'd be like, it's a shitty movie. It has no plot. Why are we here? But Jenna Hayes Dark Side knows what it is. It knows it's porn. It knows you're gonna skip to the good scenes. It just goes on its merry way. No one judges it for that, but hey, Fifty Shades wants to be a movie. <laughs> All right. The leads in this movie have no chemistry whatsoever. It's the most forced romance since Anakin and Padme. It's terrible. Everyone one is the idealistic, perfect version of what they need to be for this plot to be like, ooh. It's like Twilight. This billionaire who's like, he's a complete playboy. He does sadomasochistic shit. I mean, you know, that's his world. He's obviously completely incompatible with this completely innocent girl. You could be like, oh no, he finds that appealing. But it's not that she's innocent. She's kind of open to it. It's just she's innocent and she's boring in the sexual aspect of it. She's not as open to the possibilities as he would want someone like her to be. So you're like, why are you going after her? What, you hit a dry spell, dude? Are you this really attractive model looking billionaire that doesn't have titties just thrown at him day in day out? Do you just have to go after the girl who dresses like she sits in the front row pew of her Bible Belt church? I don't get any of it. And then there's her. She's like, Ew, no, no, this is too much for me. At a point, they're going over the contract. She's like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And he gets a disappointed look in his face. You'd think he'd be like, you know, we're not that compatible, I guess. Let's, let's just move on. Go our separate ways. And it's not like they've known each other for two whole days at the point where they're like, ooh, I'm completely infatuated with you. It's that they've bumped into each other a couple times. That's enough for them to be like, oh, you know what? I need you. There's even this shitty ass line where I mean, she's like, I'm a virgin. Yeah, she's a virgin. She's this girl who so cherishes her virginity and has all of her life. She's never had sex, but now she's gonna give it up to this dude that she's run into a couple times in the course of a couple days. I assess one thing from that. She's a gold digging whore. But in the scene where she breaks that to him, she's like, I've never had sex, I'm a virgin. He's like, where have you been all my life? And with his hands cupping her face, she's like, waiting for you. I was like, the amount of people that line had to get past to make it on screen, no one called it. No one was like, you know, this shit's a stretch already, but that that's not making it. That's actually too bad. And the fact that the lead actors have zero chemistry in this movie, that is just terrible. It's bad enough. What do you think? All right, what's the overall plot? The overall plot is their shitty ass stupid romance that shouldn't be happening because they're completely incompatible with each other. I mean, in other shitty ass movies where you have bad acting and it uses sex as the driving force for the plot, there is usually bigger shit happening. Basic instinct. It's like, oh, who killed the guy with the ice pick? Twilight. Mark this day. I'm going to use Twilight in comparison to Fifty Shades of Grey as the positive. Oh my god. How did we get here as a society? At least Twilight had the element of, oh, the werewolves might fight the vampires. There might be a big fight going on. There might be a battle. You can't have your weird freak hybrid baby because the Illuminati will like tear your lives apart and kill you and all that shit. This says there's nothing except the fact these two kind of want to date each other, but they shouldn't. And they start to realize they shouldn't. And it's just boring. That's 
It's the movie. There's no bigger picture shit. In that, it's the S&M stuff that is the gimmick that's driving the movie. If the S&M shit's not happening, you're just drudging through the bad dialogue, zero chemistry, and the shitty script to get there. And even when it does happen, it's actually not that interesting. And the fact is, I know a lot of my subscribers were looking forward to me shitting on Fifty Shades of Grey, and I knew that, and I was like, I don't want to shit on Fifty Shades of Grey just because, you know, people are expecting me to. If it's not a shitty movie, I'm going to be like, hey, guess what? It's not actually as terrible as I thought it was going to be. And it's not actually as terrible as I thought it was going to be. It's actually worse. Fifty Shades of Grey is worse than Twilight. It's worse than dog shit. Oh yeah, it's nothing. And there it is. That's the vortex, friends. That's the nothing. That's what the never-ending story was warning us about. That is where your pride goes when you're sitting in this auditorium because you watched this movie and you skipped out on Kingsman. And there's gonna be three more of these movies. I say three because there's two more books after this one, but you know they're gonna split that last movie into two parts, so it's three. All right, so did your girlfriend drag you to Fifty Shades of Grey? Have you seen this movie? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. Or if not, you can tell me of the shittiest movie you've ever seen. Actually, yeah, this is a good one. What's the shittiest movie you've ever seen. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.